time to do the job. Time to do the job! Behold the jobber of jobbers. Daniel. Daniel. Jobber. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the Emden Area Zone, D-Job, Danimal, Daniel Jobber, self-proclaimed Duke of the Kuzuits, with another episode of Jobbing Out with Danimal, Daniel Jobber, 205 Live and WWE Cruiserweight Report, courtesy of the Emden Sports Podcast Network. This week in sports, the NHL and NBA seasons both wrapped up. The Pittsburgh Penguins won the Stanley Cup in six games over the Nashville Predators by winning game six, two to nothing. Then the Golden State Warriors won the NBA championship in five games by defeating LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers in Game 5. Now it's on to the CFL football season, including your Edmonton Eskimos! In the WWE, Raw and SmackDown had terrible ratings again this week. SmackDown Live was particularly disappointing, as it was a go-home show for Money in the Bank. Raw was highlighted by a brawl encounter between Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe to build hype for the Universal title match at Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. SmackDown Live had a brief encounter between WWE Champion Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton in advance of their WWE title match this weekend at Money in the Bank, as well as setting up their Tag Team Championship match at Money in the Bank between the Usos and the New Day. Of course, be sure to check out my previews and predictions show for Money in the Bank up on the Evidence Sports Podcast Network as a bonus episode. In local wrestling, Chris Parrish from our Sounds of Struggle podcast on the Edmonton SPN cashed in his Canada Cup against the injured CWC champion Jude Dawkins and became your new CWC champion. You can hear him gloating plenty on this week's Sounds of Struggle podcast, so be sure to check it out. Anyways, now right to this week's Cruiserweight action. First off on main event, we had Lindsay Dorado versus Drew Gulak. Apparently, Lindsay Dorado wasn't too badly hurt, and these two are able to have the match they wanted to have last week. Of course, Drew Gulak comes out with his no-fly zone sign and his megaphone, letting everyone know about his cruiserweight campaign of no-high-flying cruiserweight moves. Anyway, this was a decent match. Drew Gulak worked on wearing down Dorado with his ground moves that he insists should be the only moves that cruiserweights should be using. Lindsay Dorado gets in a few really nice high-flying moves. He hits a springboard vault off the ropes into a quick pin for a two-count, a handspring stunner, and a really nice second-rope moonsault onto Drew Gulak outside of the ring. However, in the end, Drew Gulak picks up the win for his cruiserweight campaign by knocking Dorado off the top turnbuckle and pulling him through the ropes into a rollover leverage pin, putting his feet on the ropes for extra leverage in true heel fashion. I always love to see a heel win with a heel victory pin like that. Lindsay Dorado keeps selling the fact that he has a knee injury, although it only came into play in this match in a limited capacity. I'm not sure if they're going somewhere with his injury angle or if it was just for show. On Raw, the cruiserweight segments of Raw started off with a quick feature on Cedric Alexander. Then we have a backstage segment of Noam Dart talking on his video phone to Alicia Fox, and in comes Cedric Alexander. For some reason, he feels the need to reiterate the fact that he has moved on, so it makes you wonder if he really has. Anyways, he says that after he beats up Dar again, this is over, as if it wouldn't have been if he hadn't just said nothing and simply done his job of beating Noam Dar in the first place. Anyways, Leisha Fox keeps on talking and talking and talking on the camera phone throughout the segment, and as Noam Dar enters the ring, they even have a big picture of the camera phone with their talking for the entire audience to see. Anyways, Alicia Fox keeps talking, whining, and nagging as Dar tries to get it into the match. For any fans out there of Star Trek The Original Series who remembers Harry Mudd and the humorous episode I Mud, listen to Alicia Fox. All I could think of was his lovely wife, Stella. Mm, Harcourt! Harcourt Fenton Mudd! You lazy good-for-nothing! Where have you been? What have you been up to? Have you been drinking? You've been drinking again, haven't you? You useless sot! You shut up! <laughs> By the way, if you aren't familiar with Stella from the I Mud episode of Star Trek... The original series, you should go on YouTube and look up Harry Mud, and you can see footage of Stella. Unfortunately, Noam Dar isn't able to tell Alicia Fox to shut up, and the distractions of her nagging keep Dar from paying attention when the bell rings. Cedric Alexander comes up on him and hits the lumbar check for an extremely quick victory. Cedric Alexander leaves the ring smiling smugly as Noam Dar continues to deal with Alicia Fox's nagging on the camera phone. A little later on and on Raw, Titus O'Neil has invited Akira Tozawa to sit in the front row and watch Apollo Crews beat Kalisto. 
after Apollo takes care of business, Titus O'Neil goes over to Tozawa, picks the little guy right up over the barricade, throws the flocker in the ring, and then Apollo and him continue to push and toss poor Tozawa between them as they raise his hand in victory and celebrate, and they even squeeze him in between the two of them and take a selfie. It's funny to see Tozawa's face as his expression shows he's almost thinking, What the fuck? Poor little Akira Tozawa, getting shoved around in the ring in an overbearing celebration from Titus O'Neil and Apollo Crews. A great moment in cruiserweight history. <laughs> I just laughed and laughed. <laughs> then finally we have Neville in the ring, waiting, and then out comes Rich Swan to the usual, Ooh, ooh, can you handle this? Ooh, ooh, can you handle this? So he's going to dance a bit, and Neville and him are going to have a match on Monday Night Rye. No, 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 no. While he's dancing, Neville attacks him from behind and beats the crap out of him, throws him out of the ring, then throws him into the barricade. Finally, he throws Swan back into the ring and puts the rings of Saturn on him to make him suffer. After releasing the hold, Neville gets his title belt and microphone and stands over Rich Swan saying, Austin Aries, TJP, and now Richard Swan, get out of my ring. He then pushes Swan out of the ring with his foot. Then he reminds everyone that it's good to be the king. He then makes reference to a tweet from Titus O'Neil saying that he heard what was being said about Akira Tozawa, but how it takes more than a tweet from Titus O'Neil to threaten his cruiserweight championship. He tells Tozawa, Tread carefully, unless you want to be on your hands and knees bowing down to me, the king of the cruiserweights. He then throws the mic down and leaves the ring smugly. So Raw managed to have lots of cruiserweight action, but only about two seconds of actual in-match action. Wow. <laughs> Then we get to 205 Live. Before the show, they have a segment of Titus O'Neil trying to inspire Akira Tozawa to sign with the Titus brand. He starts off with his cha-cha-cha-ching and says that he isn't even officially signed with the Titus brand yet. And you're already getting the VIP treatment on Monday Night Raw. He tells him he also used his connections and got him into the main event of 205 Live, a match against TJP tonight. He says that Neville is in an uproar over his tweet because he knows that as a Titus brand client, he could literally be the next Kobe Bryant of Japan, or maybe LeBron James. Then Tozawa tries to speak up, saying, Apollo also says the Titus brand, and then Titus cuts him off and says, I know what you're going to say. The Titus brand can also look out for your best interests. Right, that's what you're going to say. Well, I couldn't agree more. So when you sign on the dotted line, it will be, It's raining yen. Hallelujah, it's raining yen. (laughs) <laughs> he tells Tozawa to sing it with him, but Tozawa does nothing of the sort, and Titus says, Ah, you don't know that one. Don't worry about it. Trust me, with my help, you will be the next WWE Cruiserweight Champion. You know what that means, right? Cha! 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 Cha-ching! Then Titus goes off as Tozawa looks concerned and shakes his head. What was Tozawa about to say Apollo said about the Titus brand? Was he going to say that they're a shady attempt to get money from people? That they get in your way as much as they benefit you? Hard to say. What are your thoughts? Either way, another very funny segment with poor Akira Tozawa being pulled in various directions without him even being able to get a word in edgewise. Then the show officially begins with Arya Devari against Cedric Alexander. First, as Cedric Alexander comes out, they quickly recap the Alicia Fox video phone stuff from Raw and Alexander's easy victory. Cedric Alexander is extremely athletic, and this is a pretty good match. Despite a few nice athletic moves from Alexander, the announcers really were selling up Arya Devari and had me wondering if he might actually get the victory and end Cedric Alexander's push for the time being. This was especially true after Devari took Cedric Alexander's feet up from under him while he was attempting to springboard off the top rope, and Alexander's face went straight down into the turnbuckle pad before he rolled onto the mat. Nasty. However, Devari was only able to cover for a two count. Later on, Devari hit a beautiful neck breaker but only gets a two count again. Devari continues to work over Alexander to no avail, and then finally Cedric comes back with a bunch of loud chops and slaps, and then hits a handspring in Siguri, and follows up with finally hitting his springboard clothesline. However, he's about to finish off Devari, there comes Alicia Fox's voice. Noam Dar comes out with his phone, video chatting again with Alicia Fox, and once again they put the phone in a big image on the video board for everyone to see. Dar tries to come to the ring to distract Alexander, but... Mm, Harcourt! Harcourt! Fenton Mud! Have you been overeating? Have you been drinking again? You been drinking again, you useless sot! You lazy, good for nothing! Once again, Noam Dar does not have the courage to say, SHUT UP! When he gets to the ring, Cedric Alexander takes him out with a sliding drop kick, but when he gets up, Devari tries to roll him over for the pin, but only gets a two count. Then Cedric hits his lumbar check and gets the three count victory. After the match, Alicia Foss continues to talk and nag, and she sees Cedric Alexander and starts yelling at him. 
Alexander picks up the phone, but while Alicia Fox is asking where Noam Dar is, he pretends he can't hear her. Then he gestures to Noam Dar and hangs up on her, something that Noam Dar hasn't had the courage to do for himself. Interesting and somewhat amusing couple of segments, but I'm not sure they'll want to continue it on any longer, as it's likely to get old very fast. Then Austin Aries comes out to address the state of his career. He basically says that he's accepted the fact that he wasn't able to get it done against Neville, but he's not bitter. He also says that in the past few months, battling Neville and TJP, he has injuries to his leg and neck and is not medically cleared to compete until the WWE gets some test results back. He wanted to let the WWE Universe know the near future of Austin Aries right from his mouth. Then Tony Nese comes out and basically says, Have a seat like a fan and let the real athletes take over. Well, he does call himself the premier athlete. He says he intends to take Austin Aries' place. Austin Aries compliments him on the great exercises he must have been doing to maintain such a great physique, but asks him what exercise he's been doing to grow a pair. <laughs> Tony Nies says that Austin Aries always has lots of jokes, but that he no longer has time for Aries' jokes. He looks like he's challenging Austin Aries, but of course, Aries is unable to wrestle. Then out comes gentleman Jack Gallagher in Aries' defense in a suit, reminding Tony Nies this is a town known for having fun. New Orleans, I think. He also tells Nice that if he expects us to believe that he's capable of replacing Austin Aries, then he is the biggest joke of all, because he is no Austin Aries. And that's when the fight broke out. Tony Nice tries to hit Gallagher, but Jack ducks, grabs his umbrella William III, and breaks it over Tony Nice, sending him from the ring. Austin Aries then pulls out a banana and toasts Jack Gallagher with his umbrella as the two celebrate their moment of smugness. Essentially, this segment was a way to show that Austin Aries is stepping back for a bit, and also setting up a match between Jack Gallagher and Tony Nese next week on 205 Live. Then they show a quick backstage segment of TJP going towards the ring for his match with Akira Tozawa, and Rich Swan stopping him for a quick conversation. Swan tries to remind TJP of who he used to be before he started changing as a result of his affiliation with Neville. He tells TJP to get his head in the game, which was a way of trying to get TJP to go back to the way he was before. Mostly, I think they just wanted to get Rich Swan on 205 Live. Then they have a quick segment that starts off with Mustafa Ali talking about how he loves high-flying as a way of captivating the audience. This is then quickly interrupted by a political campaign segment from Drew Gulak. He says that Mustafa Ali only cares about himself, but that he cares about the WWE Universe and stands for a better 205 Live. The segment was setting up a match next week between Mustafa Ali and Drew Gulak, also on 205 Live. This was an interesting change. They used the middle segment to set up several matches for the next week, rather than having a third match. It's an interesting attempt to try to do things differently on 205 Live. Then we have the main event of the evening, TJP versus Akira Tozawa. This is a pretty good match between two very good athletes with great agility, closer to what cruiserweight wrestling should be in all honesty. The crowd was not appreciating the match as much as they could early on, as I believe they were chanting CM Punk for a short time there. However, Akira Tozawa worked to get them refocused with his Ah! 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 chant, and the crowd did start chanting along with him. Obviously, Titus O'Neil was watching backstage on the monitor as well. As the match started heating up, Akira Tozawa was really able to get the crowd behind him with my favorite battle cry, the chants were getting louder and louder and more in chorus. Then Tozawa hits a high-speed suicide dive. Tozawa was really doing a great job of showing the charisma that demonstrates why he may be the top cruiserweight babyface, as I've been saying he is. TJP does counter back, hitting his gut buster he has been turning heads with in the past few weeks. Then he gets Tozawa in his knee bar and tries to make him tap out. However, Tozawa gets to the ropes to break it up. Then Tozawa hits TJP with a nice spike German suplex and climbs to the top turnbuckle and hits his flying senton. He covers TJP for the one, two, three, and gets the big win, essentially becoming the new number one contender, although I don't outwardly say this. Anyway, here is your main event winner, Akira Tozawa! This, of course, leaves TJP once again soul-searching. Then they go backstage to Titus O'Neil singing, It's raining yen! Hallelujah, it's raining yen. Then in comes Neville, and Titus O'Neil says, Hey, when you got pipes like this, you gotta let them fly. And Neville says he doesn't care about Titus's singing. He cares about the drivel that is coming out of his mouth, because he's setting up his client Tazawa for pain and misery, as he's nowhere near the Neville level. Titus says, Neville level. It's pretty clever. But see the Titus brand. It's about the future. And see, the man I just saw whoop your former associate TJP, Mr. Tazawa, let's just say he is the future. The future being the future of 205 Live. Looks like I'm going to get my wish. A near future title match between Neville and Akira Tozawa. So an interesting week in the cruiserweight division. We all but explicitly crown a new number one contender. 
We set up two of next week's matches with middle backstage segments, and the WWE goes with a different over-the-top style of humor throughout the week's Cruiserweight action. Myself, I can get behind over-the-top, as I am quite fluent in over-the-top humor, having been hugely influenced by such comedy acts like Monty Python and Saturday Night Live. However, we'll see how the WWE Universe in general responds to this. Finally, for the near future, I'm happy that we're headed for an Akira Tozawa vs. Neville title match. Most likely, Neville should retain the title for now. What I'd like to see long-term, though, is some sort of multi-man match at SummerSlam between all the top cruiserweights to crown the new champion going forward. Hopefully this will be a babyface to the Kira Tozawa or Austin Aries, who I expect to return from injury, perhaps just in time for SummerSlam. Anyways, that'll wrap it up for this week's Cruiserweight Action and Coverage. I'm the Edmonton Area's own D-Job, Danimal Daniel Jobber, self-proclaimed Duke of the Cruiserweights, and you have been listening to Jobbing Out with Danimal Daniel Jobber, 205 Live and WWE Cruiserweight Report on the Edmonton Sports Podcast Network, the Edmonton SPN. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Daniel Jobber with a capital D, capital J. You can follow me on Instagram under Danimal Daniel Jobber, all lowercase, and go to my awesome website, DanimalDanielJobber.ca and check out all my fun stuff and my popular Cruiserweight Power Rankings. Be sure to check out the other action on the Edmonton SPN, including Mike the Ref's own The Blown Call and Shorter Quick Calls podcast. Also be sure to check out the Sounds of Struggle podcast with the new CWC champion, Chris Parrish and Maniac. And move with them, just move with them. Come on, come on, just move with them. As always, they have lots of sports and wrestling knowledge and really shed insight into the world of sports again this week. Be sure to also check out great local wrestling action on CWC Evolution and RCW Breakout, featuring Mike the Ref's great commentary. And then when you love us, like I know you will, go to whatamaneuver.net and buy official Edmonton SPN merchandise, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, shirts especially designed for ladies and children, and even baby onesies to get your baby off to a great start as fans of the Edmonton SPN and little jobbers. Because remember, you can also join the Jobber Squad there and buy official Danimal Daniel Jobber merchandise too. If you have any trouble remembering how to spell whatamaneuver.net, you can now go to my website, danimaldanieljobber.ca, and go to my merchandise page, which will lead you right to whatamaneuver.net to buy your official Danimal Daniel Jobber merchandise. As always, no matter what platform you watch us on, always like, subscribe, and leave comments to let us know what you think you'd like to see in the near future. Because to watch our work cannot give us any kind of uh, credit or feedback or likes, that sort of thing. That ain't right. Finally, be sure to follow the Edmonton SPN on Twitter at Edmonton SPN, capital E, capital S, capital P, capital N, and follow Mike the Ref on Instagram, Mike the Ref EDM, with all lowercase letters. With that, I'm going to wrap this up. Thanks for listening this week to Jobbing Out with Animal Daniel Jobber, 205 Live, and WWE Cruiserweight Report, and I'll see you next week. Jobber out! Did I mention that Chris Parrish is a new CWC champion? <laughs> Time to do the job! Behold the jobber of jobbers. Daniel. Daniel. Jobber. Ha 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 ha.